that the video of footballer Kurt Zuma drop kicking his cat has now cost him two weeks' wages. A uh, game this weekend and the loss of one of his biggest sponsors. Well, the RSPCA yesterday issued a statement saying they had taken away his cats, but should he be facing further punishment? And what does the law say about the treatment of our pets? So we're going to ask Dr Scott and MP Neil Parrish uh, that in just a moment. First, though, we are joined by our only this morning cat lover with his reaction, and he's mm. also a football lover as well. It's Dermot O'Leary. Oh, Dermot. hi, Dermot. Morning, guys. Hi, hi, Dermot. How are you doing? Just about this. Very good. Happy birthday, Phyllis. Lovely to have you back. Thanks for also providing a mirror for me to do my hair. Which <laughs> <laughs> um, let's, uh, let's talk about this then. Um, you, uh, you are um, uh, closely associated with cats. Um, you're yeah. supporter of the cat protection. Um, and so uh, when you're, this crossed your desk for the first time, when you saw this video, what did you think? I, to be honest, Phil, I didn't even watch it because I thought... Um... When you saw that, when I saw the headline of, of you know, man kicks cat and then throws shoe at cat and then slaps cat, that's sort of all I needed to see. I thought if I saw it, it would just end up kind of upsetting me. And, you know, I just sort of, you know, you don't want to go down, you know, too far down that route. So, um, but it's, it's obviously, it's just awful and stupid and silly. And um, uh, he seems like he is mortified by his actions. But, uh, you know, it's a question now as to, as to where this goes. It was interesting that, West Ham played him, which I thought was mm. odd, given that it sent out mixed messages um, in, in that they condemned his his actions, and then they, they but they also played him that night. So that's obviously sent out a mixed message to to the young fans of West Ham, um, who are a brilliant family club. So um, you know, it, I guess what's interesting, like you said, the you know the, the RSPCA have taken away the cats. Now they investigate, and I, I I think the way it works is then they report to the police or the Crown Prosecution Service, and then. It is, they see what action's taken, but that, I guess that's the, the kind of interesting thing. Now, for me, I think that um, the most important thing with all this is is education and, and, and people learning from their mistakes. So I think that the, the, the most important thing that they can do, or he can do, is um, is, to, is to, you know, he's paid his fine and, uh, you know, it might go further. He's lost his Adidas contract. So I, I guess now it's all, it's all about how he learns and how he can, be an, he can be an example to young kids going forward as to what you shouldn't be doing um, to an animal. And maybe, you know, he goes to volunteer at Battersea or goes and sees the work the RSPCA do and, and you know, and sort of, I, I don't want to sound melodramatic, but it goes through some sort of rehabilitative process. And you think sort of rehabilitation and being an example of how to actually conduct yourself around animals is better than, say, a standard prosecution because we know that the the laws have changed and there is, you know, there is something in place here up to five years now. So, yeah, I think so. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, it depends. If it turns out that you know they find out that he's done this loads of times and and it is a serial cat abuser, then then I might feel differently. But if it's a one-off, you know, stupid, impulsive thing to do, then. Um, you know, I'm a big fan of rehabilitative justice, and 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 you know, my sister's a, a doctor of criminology, and I've sort of I've learned a lot through her, mm. and it, and it does work. So um, yeah, I, I think you know you, you have to believe in rehabilitation. All right, Gemma. Thanks, well, thank Gemma. you for the moment. Because let's talk to, no worries, uh, to Dr. Scott, who was horrified uh, by what he saw. Yeah, I'm 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 disgusted at the behaviour of this, of this man. Um, this is a guy who has introduced two defenceless animals into his home uh, who trust him and give him unconditional love. And how does he repay that? By kicking them. And it's not an accident. This is a, a purposeful act. Um, swiping the cat off, the, off the, the desk in front of a child. Mm. And then it's being filmed by someone who's laughing and then thinks that it's the right thing to then post that on social mm. media. Like, mm. that's something mm. that we should be advocating and, and saying is a really good idea. I, I am so disgusted about so many elements of this. And then again, that David Moyes decided that he's going to put entertainment, which is what football is, over the ethics surrounding animal cruelty by playing him. Mm. And thank goodness the football fans of not only Watford, but also West Ham, who get vilified constantly, have actually gone, you know, actually, this is not cool, and booed him every time he touched the ball. And it took the supporters to say, 
why are you playing this guy for them to then go, oh, OK, maybe, yes, we should mm. suspend him for two weeks? Well, he's been fined a quarter of a million pounds. Um, £250,000 is actually two weeks' wages. Yeah. So wow. it sounds huge. It is I, huge, I don't think it is. I think wages. it's minimal. Um, yesterday, it Vitality and Insurance and Investment really. Firm said they were suspending their sponsorship of West Ham over the club's decision mm -hmm. to play him on Tuesday. A spokesman said, uh, at Vitality, we condemn animal cruelty and violence of any kind. We're hugely disappointed by the judgment subsequently shown by the club in response to this incident. Yep, totally agree. And, look, we have to go back to the Animal Welfare Act, which I was a government spokesman of in 2006, and one of the main elements of that, it's the principal law relating to animal welfare, and it talks about protecting from pain, injury, suffering and disease, and it defines animal cruelty as causing unnecessary suffering to an animal. Mm. I don't care if he's only done this once. I don't care. That is behaviour which absolutely constitutes animal cruelty mm -hmm. and at what so we have to go it's like if murder we'll go oh well only if they murder for a second time do we then prosecute absolutely not this is behavior that cannot be tolerated it was done in front of a child mm -hmm. it's then posted on social media and this guy is in front of countless children every single day we just have to as humans stop thinking that we um we're, we're born with sentience and compassion and the fact that we can behave like this and, and seemingly get away with it, it, it cannot be tolerated. Mm. We need to start being the custodians of the planet that we should be. And this kind of behaviour, this, this gentleman as a, as a role model, is, is just not someone that should be allowed to get away with it. Right, let's speak to you, uh, Neil Parrish now, because you campaigned for a manifesto for cats in 2015. I know you saw the video like everybody else and you feel incredibly passionate um, about this. You believe that he actually could be in a bit more trouble here and we just need to see what unfolds. That's right, because I, I echo the words of, of both this morning that, you know, we, we have animals to, to look after and all the love they give us uh, and we do not kick them. Um, and so, yes, I think, you know, it, it, he is a role model and so therefore it has to be put right and he shouldn't have been played by West Ham. And so I think the French also have very strong laws. Um, he could face four, four years imprisonment and I think, you know, he has to be, I think he can have some rehabilitation. I'm not against that but I think you'll find we've got to sort of have try and put the full weight of the law on him first I also think he has to sort of properly apologize because you see the trouble with the video is that they're they're all laughing when they do it and, and yes or afterwards yes you can be very remorseful but there doesn't seem to be much remorse when it was being done and so you know and and children are watching this um you know we want to educate people to look after their animals really well and most people do um, but we can't have footballers behaving like this and so you know west ham like i said should not have played him and i think we will pursue this and the rsbca and the police now have to decide whether they return those cats to him or not because should is he a fit person to have a cat um and you know we do have to play this one very seriously because you know there are people out there i mean i chair a select committee where we've taken evidence on cruelty you know there are people out there unfortunately that are cruel uh, to animals and we have got to really make sure this one comes over loud and clear to people that this is not the way forward we want in you know in school we want you know we bring dogs into schools now don't we um so that those families perhaps are not treating their animals so well the children see the proper way to treat an animal and and this is the downside for me not only for the poor cat itself um but the fact the message it sends out so you know we will pursue this one through the sort of french authorities as well as our own and i think we need to sort of have a firm rule of law on this and then let's see what he does himself mm. well, in order to put the situation right. West Ham have issued a statement. Kurt and the club are cooperating fully with the investigation. Kurt is extremely remorseful and, like everyone at the club, fully understands the depth of feeling surrounding the incident and the need for action to be taken. Essex Police say that uh, they, uh, the investigation has been led by the RSPCA and that they're continuing to work closely with them. And the RSPCA have said two cats have been taken for a check-up at the vets and then will remain in our care while the investigation mm. continues. As you say, um, uh, Neil, uh, MP for Tiverton and Honiton, you know, he is a... He is a role model. He's watched by kids, watched and admired by kids, you know, around the world. Um, and uh, and for it to have happened is appalling. For it to have been videoed is appalling. Mm. For that video to be then posted mm. 
is astonishing, surely. I think it's the attitude that I'm so upset about as well, because, you know, it, it was done sort of a, in play almost, um, and, and this is the horrendous part. And I'm not saying he can't have rehabilitation. I think he can, and I think, you know, if he's got to, you know, if you're really strict with the law regarding him, um, then I think, you know, that will help him to look for rehabilitation mm. because he, you know, this will damage his career hugely. He's a good footballer. Um, this is not the behaviour um, of a footballer who is out there because, you know, much of our younger population um, love football, quite rightly. Um, they see, they, you know, they don't like stuffy politicians like me. They don't look to me. They look to, to footballers to actually, you know, follow. And 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 this is you know this is what worries me for the yeah. cat itself and the message it sends and so I think we've got to be really firm um, get a proper you know proper um, law and proper rehabilitation and also like I said and I will repeat it West Ham had no business whatsoever playing him the other night they really did not all right thank, thank you. you thank you also thanks all three of you thank you very much indeed.